Fools are Swamp here, and welcome to episode 42 of Ace Attorney Investigations 2. Last time, we did some investigation around the Grand Tower, we reunited with Emma, and we basically discovered that there was a hidden 50th first floor that's being used as a storeroom in the Grand Tower. Anyways, let's get investigating. We're gonna need to investigate thoroughly. Mr. Edward, please tell me about the case. Right then, where should I begin? I see! This is clearly a serious situation! Why does she look like she's having so much fun? Hehehe! <laughs> Looks like you're gonna uh, bind prosecutorial attorney Edgeworth! I'm not a defense attorney, nor is there such a thing as a prosecutorial attorney! It's like the fusion, Mr. Edgeworth! This looks like a job for science! Don't you worry, I've got everything I hear in my bag! Are you sure you're all for this, Emma? Don't worry, we'll share some white powder and we'll do some magic! <laughs> of course, so, once again! It's good to be working with you, Mr. Edgeworth. And I'm glad to be working with you as well. Looks like we've got ourselves another cute assistant. So what's the plan? That lift looks pretty suspicious to me. It looks like it goes down. I am curious as well, but first, we should investigate this room. Okay, if you find anything out, be sure to tell Uncle Ray. And if I remember something, I'll let you know. Yes, please do. Emma? Roger, I'm Ray's support. Well then, let's begin the investigation. Yeah, because this is actually a really fun place because, as you can tell from just a lot of things here, for example, we have the uh, Alif Red statue from the previous game, we have Red White's desk, we have basically the Mr. Money, the Mr. Monkey Head, we have the Blue Badger, basically Rhoda's ugly suitcase, and most importantly, Grossberg's Fisherman painting. Grossberg's Fisherman painting is in the back of this room. It's basically, this is be all evidence from past cases is being collected. What is this? It looks like a giant head. If I recall, this is the head of Miss Monkey. I believe it was from a case I was involved in in the past. It's impressive how they were able to get such a large object into this room. Hmm, this monkey, huh? That doesn't sound like it has a really nice wing to it. Thank you remember the name wrong, Mr. Edgeworth. Yeah, uh, impossible. That can't be true. It's back. There's a huge sack of money piled up here. How unrefined. How oh, many dollar bills? Talk about big bucks. So how many times? How many times are you really sorry you think this is worth? A tenth. Leave my salary out of this. I'm not gumshoe. Wow! Talk about bad taste! I've never seen such a gaudy desk before! <laughs> Just what kind of person would use something like this? And meanwhile, Red White Prison. I am Splendid! Well, hello there, fellow prisoners! I am Splendiferous, wouldn't you agree? I got my prison jumpsuit upgraded to purple! Thanks to the... Thanks to the supplier! He has most handy utilities! The tabletop is being supported by four naked men. The design is quite painful to look at. It's only as in poor taste. Maybe this is also one of your past cases. No, not against I handle involving a person with such bad taste. Edward blocked out red white. He blocked it out. The name of my personage. Or at least I hope not. Personage. There's a transceiver thing next to these trophies. Yes, the killer transceiver. It seems like they were lined together on purpose. Looks like there's still got batteries in it. Might come in handy later, so I'll pick them for now. I'll be sure putting the you put the you use before I turn into the police. That sounds like what a great certain great thief would say. Yeah, basically turn about fare, farewell my turnabout stuff. Yes, Mike Meekin's Badger Mobile. Scientifically speaking, this must be a one nice box. Let's change the iron to keep the cold from escaping, Polly. Now, Emma, wouldn't this be a costume trunk? It's, it's made from wood that repels bugs in order to protect the clothes inside. Huh, I see. Of course. There's another. That's another plausible theory. If your clothes are stored in a cold place, what it would be nice and cool to wear in the summer. I guess she's sticking to her ice box theory. Th these are. Yes. Use perfume! The iron the Bobbley's ink! Iron Infant! And the Mozilla. Yeah, I just played on the shelf here as if I could call it. Oh, evidence for past cases that I was involved with! What are they doing here? Hmm, I guess that 
would make this place the BIC's evidence store room, huh? These are I these items should be kept in the care of the police. Don't they keep evidence in the prosecutor's office? Only for current trials, however, once a verdict's been reached, the evidence is transferred over to the police department and stored in the evidence room. But looks like the evidence has been stored here instead. There's no point worrying about it. For now, I should try examining everything. It looks like some of the evidence here have tags in front of them. And there's numbers written on the tags. Maybe they're the ID numbers for the evidence! No, based on how large these numbers are, and the nature of these items, I'd say... These are prices! But prices? If that's the case... Wow, these are ridiculously expensive! She seems more concerned with the high prices than the legitimacy of this whole affair. The evidence on display. I should inspect every look, nook and cranny. From the price tags attached to the piece of evidence and the huge stash of cash, it's clear that the buying and selling of evidence was being carried out in here. In the end, 51st floor, evidence was being trafficked? This clearly means something! It seems further investigation is needed about the dealings that went on in this place. If only there was a witness, we could just ask them! A witness. That, yes, not the interest. Ink and a lamp. Both are evidence that I've handled before. And then Pagliano, he was I am dancing the bomb and his ink is being held hostage here! We have to save it! What's all the stuff here linked to you? Many of the items here are objects that I've handled just a short while ago. It's probably only a coincidence that they're all collected here. A coincidence? I never thought you I hear you say that word, Mr. Edgeworth. No matter what the, how improbable, if it fits with the facts, then we must accept it as true. Isn't that the same with science? Huh, we should we should discuss science in detail someday, Mr. Edgeworth. It's a small bottle. I've seen this piece of evidence in the past. Huh? Is is that all? Ah uh, yes. What more do you want me to say? Uh I mean to make my own, note to self. You know those boring how you sound like works of art when Mr. Edgeworth describes them. Mm. Don't read a loud read a memo like that aloud. The Iron Infant is being held hostage! Look you don't! It looks kinda like the Steel Samurai! It's the Iron Infant. Saw the Steel Samurai and the Pink Princess. He was designed to become a hero of justice from the moment of his birth. So much pressure rests on his tiny baby shoulders. And yet he carries himself with a grace with a grace and dignity that belies a toddler of his age. Hello! Mr. Edward, are you even listening to me? Hmm? Uh, uh, of course I am. Oh, how cute! This stuffed animal's so fluffy! That's from Gold Lake. It should be in the care of the, of the prosecutor assigned to that case right now. And that's, that's me on Sebastian. Hey, Justin! I can't find the Mozilla doll! Why is it thing in a place like this? Huh? This little guy's missing his left horn! His left horn. I'm sure it was already missing when I first saw it. Then this must be a defective product. I demand a recall. Now that I think about it, giving you a bad. Eh, sorry, forgot about that. This storm contains items to be sold, doesn't it? It's unfortunate, but the possibility seems quite high. I suspect some nefarious individual has been selling evidence here. Are people actually paying money for this stuff? Apparently, some people do. The price tags are proof. Different strokes for different folks, I guess. That's strange. Only this one size empty. But it's not a surprise tag like all the others. Indeed, furthermore, there's a piece of this cloth that is not covered in dust. Perhaps something was placed here not long ago. I see. It just seems like it, but... What could it may have been? A star shaped mark in the dust, I wonder. Could it be related to a certain piece of evidence? And let's get it out. Candlestick. The dust pattern matches up perfectly with the base of the candelabra. It's likely the killer got the candelabra from this very storeroom. Doesn't that mean the candelabra was also a piece of evidence? That's quite possible. However, that is not the issue here. The murder weapon originally came from this storeroom. We must keep that in mind. Okay, just wanted to double check. Oh, forgot to check out the mannequin. This mannequin. I've got it! This mannequin, I've got it according to my scientific reasoning. This is something you encounter in one of your past cases, right? No, it's not. This is the first time I've seen this mannequin. It seems completely unrelated to the other objects in this room. 
there's no price tag for this mannequin either. So then why is it here? Okay. Yes, and the we went through compromise. <laughs> yes, they they raided it. <laughs> they raided Tender Lender. <laughs> Blaze raided it. I'll take your freaking sign. Don't take my sign. Don't do mess with me, girly. I can ma I'll f you up. I don't care if you're grand days, Bruto. I'm taking your damn sign. Don't you think it's kind of creepy how all these marks are lined up in such a dark place? Hmm. Emma, are you not good with horror movies? N no way! Horror movies are so unscientific! So she's scared of them. I will rest until I inspect every suspicious looking nook and cranny. These are murder case files! <laughs> what are these doing here? Alright, they should be in depth in the prosecutor's building or the courthouse, but it seems that someone has removed them. Something is aloof, and we are none the wiser. Do -do -do -do. Th this, this mask is the mysterious global hero Oni, Oni and the Copan. Why are you so surprised? Mr. Andrew, don't you know everything around this show is shrouded mystery? From the production company to the, the broadcast team, even the merchandises are defined. Wouldn't that mean they completely simply went bankrupt? It's Captain Zypan! He's really popular in Europe! All the kids and even the adults dress up like him! I think the flower on his head would be a little too much. What TV show are, are these masks from? I'm not very familiar with it, but I believe the students of the Starry School. Each member of the class is a hero of justice. So I guess those red and white cats are a part of their school uniform. And maybe the number of isolates on the mask correspond to their class ranking. See, the one on the left is ranked number one, and the one on the right is number two, and so on. Oh, I see. So that's how it works. If that's the case, the students with the lowest rank would have a mask full of holes. I guess we'll have to watch the show to find out. When you think of the heroines of, from the Steel Samurai universe, she's the first to go to right. She's the only one! That's right! I love the Pink Princess, too! Emma, you watch this kind of show? We have a lot to discuss, Emma. Yeah, of course! You like it, too, don't you, Mr. Andrew? Now I wouldn't go that far. Really? Since you have a Steel Samurai figure in your office, I thought for sure! Yeah! So even Emma has noticed it! The Steel Samurai, War of Neo Tokyo, and the Nickel Samurai! The nickel, s the nickel samurai always seemed kind of smug by comparison. And his thunder belt doesn't look cool at all. I tell her the steel samurai. Hmm. Huh. It seems she has good taste. Whatever. I will take you on instead of K. You, sh you don't sh bring shame to me on that K. That's yes, nothing of interest. Ah! Yeah. Oh, we can't see evil magistrate. And then basically deduce German Ninja Master. The German Ninja Master that Kay had with her. Perhaps it was originally attached to this hook. That sounds plausible, scientifically speaking. In other words, Kay came down here? It's quite likely, but for what purpose? Maybe she was going to steal something from this place. A great thief who steals the truth, huh? No, I don't think we can answer that question at this time. Various masks are placed here. There's even one of the Steel Samurai. Indeed, there are fairly high quality replicas. Scientifically speaking, it's just a bunch of random masks. It certainly does look like a hodgepodge collection of masks. Hmm, this hook is. It looks like a hook to um, hang a mask from. I wonder what mask used to be here. A statue! Yes, it's some sort of new fact. No, this is evidence from a case I was recent, previously involved in. I believe it was called the Alif the Alice Red statue. <laughs> oh, don't you say that name wrong, Hendrix! Otherwise, you'll hear that music. Hey, Hendrix, hearing those, hearing that music, that Egyptian that music. What the? Oh no! What is it, Mister Hendrix? Here it is here, and then then Dick of the Block comes in. 
You're insulting my statue, my van, wonderful statue, and look at that painting! The fisherman's beautiful, I must own it for my collection! And then Grossberg both says, No, you will not take my painting! Oh! Then they have like a fight in the audience, just punching each other, throwing each other. What's happening? And then Grossberg just belly slams Zingle Blanc like Poe from Kung Fu Panda did with Tyler, sending him flying through the wall. There are supposed to be two of them, but one real and one fake, but no matter which one this is, it's unnatural for it to top a place like this. Actually, it's the real one if you look at the eyes. In which case, that actually does prove that Blaze had some connections with Quercus Alba. Basically, adding those, adding those connections, adding those things, which explains how Jock Sportsman was able to basically just exist in the prosecutor's office. Miss Andrew, do you really see a lot of cases, huh? Yes, lot is here. Gotcha. Yippee ki yay! You got. I got me a scoop. Eek! Ah, my eyes. That's all of them. Stop it! I get away from me from the great lot. Lot can't that easily. I reckon y'all must be criminals. I'ma set sixteen shots for y'all. You can use the cheese. We're not. We're not criminals. Really? Y'all ain't fooling my camera of justice with them words. Hmm, you are. Huh? You're. I yeah that heinous frosty from back then. Who are you calling heinous? Even though Lada never really dealt with Edgeworth being heinous, really. This is Lada Hart. She's a photograph I've dealt with during my past cases. You've dealt with her with two cases. I see her distinctive accent and her tie rock mouth haven't changed a bit. Just look at your face. You're obviously up to no good. It seems she has a bad impression of us. Now it's time for you to pay your dues. Stand there while I photograph y'all. We only came to investigate! Class! You think you can fool me like that? Mr. Edwards, she's not listening at all! She seems harmless. Let's just leave her be for now. Suitcase. Oh man, Uncle Ray's heart is pounding up a storm. Surrounded by so many cutie pies in such a small cramped room. Shields, try, please try to be more serious. Don't try to look like a lecture. <laughs> it was just a joke! Uncle Ray's keeping a close watch over little K. So you can continue your investigation without worry. You watching our case exactly what I'm worried about. Yes, can I help you with something? Sarah, why did you come here? For the people of the world and for myself. I'm a social justice photographer after all. So social justice? Then allow me to guess the reason why you came here. Someone wasn't checking their privilege, correct? Was it perhaps to expose the illegal evidence of trafficking? Oh, I get it. You were trying to get a scoop of the secret dealings. Huh? huh? Y'all know that much already? Well, I reckon there ain't no more, no reason to hide anymore. My sources tell me there's some kind of black market auction being held around these parts. What'd you say? So then, all the evi this evidence here is, yep, there are the goods for the auction. There are, there's a lot of dirty money flying around here. I wanted to try and catch it with my own two eyes. My source gave me a whole bunch of info, but I figured just hearing about it ain't enough. Seeing is believing after all. So I've been stalking around this place from behind this here statue since yesterday. The auction took place late that night and went on until the early morning. A murder on the, a murder on the night of the Black Market auction. Could the two events be related? Black Market dealers in the Grand Tower? Guess I really hit the mother load this time. Were all the items in the auction pieces of evidence? There was no normal stuff too, like so and on, like. I wouldn't consider Stern and R to be normal. But I reckon the evidence was the star of the show here. These folks are law fanatics, trying to get their hands on the latest goods from the police. So that's why you wanted to get pieces of Miss Hart? Pretty much. They're, they were meeting right under this ear, this ear very store roof, so I watched them up for up here. You said you were here since yesterday. Did you witness the entire event? It was a black market auction after all. They followed a fairly detailed procedure. First, all the participants entered the storeroom from the viewing platform one at a time. When they got in, they each took one of those masks on the wall over there. Fun thing about those masks, they're all equipped with voice changes, itty bitty ones. That way, they wouldn't be able to recognize. They wanted to be protect their an anonymity. You mean that? You mean their anonymity? Yeah, that's it. Their anonymity. Why not just say identify and make it all easier for us? At the ball on the masks, they go down that lift. 
On the way back, it was the same thing, but in reverse. They come up one by one, return the masks, and head up out of the storeroom. Wow, that's pretty thorough! Hmm, how many participants were there? Eleven people all together. I can't each every one of them made their way back down. What happened, Lotta? What happened? Ah, you know it! I was just laid up behind the statue the entire time. Dad, where, where are you in the beginning? The beginning? Well, don't you worry about that, you hear? So she was hiding behind the statue the entire time. I watched the folks coming up in while lurking in the shadows. Oh, secret agent lie. Now it's self, secret agents like to work in the shadows. And then they used that their lift over there to get down to the auction site. After all they went down, I watched the whole thing from the lift. Did that lift stay down the entire time? No, it came back up, but there was a tight gap in the floor there. There's a bunch of space between the floor and the lift platform, you see. So I could just, so I could see just about everything that was going on down there. Then did you see the person who was conducting the auction? Eh, well, yeah, you betcha I did. Like, what kind of story would it be if I didn't see who the conductor was? A conductor, huh? I seems I need to ask him more about that in detail. Do you have any more information about the so-called conductor? You know, I came to get me a scoop. What makes you think I'll give any information to you, Willie, with it? Basically, what you're saying is you don't know. I see. So that's why she won't answer. What can I say? I can't, couldn't even tell how old they were, or even if they were a gal gal. Hey, tell me what the person was wearing at the time. They had on a white jacket with a purple flower, and they were wearing white gloves. But you know, they don't, that don't mean much when I have no earthly clue as to who they were. So the conductor's identity was hidden, just like the participants. That's right. They had on a mask and voice changer, just like everyone else. What kind of mask did the person wear? It was a Zuvern mask, I reckon. Zuvern? What presence is that supposed to be? Mr. Edgeworth, you don't know that Zuvern? He's the sworn enemy of global hero Oni... Oni Yakpon. Zuvern, the ruler of time. Seriously, who hasn't heard of him? Most people, I imagine. Since the conductor wore a mask, I assume you weren't able to see their face. Now I'm an attendant winning bit, and after I came all this way for my big scoop. That whole store turned out to be nothing but fool's gold. That set her closely familiar. Perhaps I should show her that piece of evidence. You said the conductor wore a white jacket and a purple flower and white gloves. That's right, they should look so fit for a criminal mastermind. Hot, do they look anything like this? Hey, that's it. That's the conductor. Hold your horses. Are you telling me the conductor's dead? She's the victim of a case, and we are investigating. Her name is Jill Crane. Have you heard of her? Can't say I have. So she was a lady, huh? What kind of gal just like that? She get her kicked by fooling me to think she's the guy. I doubt that her intention was to deceive you. Setting that aside, we have some. Uh, we established some, uh, something of a major importance. The victim was the conductor of the black market auction. I see, so the conductor was killed. So that might, that might explain. Explain what, Miss Hart? Ah, no, no, no. It, no, honest. Miss Hart, you clearly sound suspicious just now. And I'm telling you, I ain't. Hmm, can't be. Sorry, or are you trying to say something? No, I, I ain't. I ain't say nothing. Please don't like that. You don't be like that. Just tell us. I don't think I tell y'all. I'm a journal. Information is what pays the bills. I can't go around spouting everything I know. I've already said too much. I got nothing left to say. Then, what if I told. What if I found some fingerprints for you? What, what good would that do me? I don't want none of your dusty old prints. Why don't you two follow my example and do some investigating on your own? Uh, I guess you won't tell us anything. Not to worry, Emma. Just leave it to me. I have a certain method of drawing out information from those who wish to hide it. My if my opponent's lips are sealed, I will be the one to unseal them. Let us begin. Logic Realm, activate! Whoosh! First, let me analyze my opponent's demeanor. It's Lotta. I tell you nothing, so quit wasting my time. She seems rather impatient, as if she's trying to cut off the conversation. I must be careful with my time. I won't have long to consider her, my responses. I'm more certain that she's hiding something from me. That's where I'll begin my attack. Now, for the time for the first move. Don't you think you're reacting? I'm almost calm, now leave me alone! 
I'll read it. I'll read the journals. Always keeps it cool. Speaking of journalists, I have something interesting to tell you. A few days ago, I met another self-proclaimed journalist. She spoke with an accent quite similar to your own. So she spoke like me. It made me worse. Nicole Swift. She had a stick with speaking. One very much like your own. Furthermore, she said that she had a mentor. Could she have been referring to you? Uh oh, so y'all know Nicole. Well, ain't that a fun little Quinty Nick? Where'd y'all meet? Wait. No, no, stop trying to get me a spill the beans. Phew, that was a close call. It seems that she let down her guard when she talks about Miss Swift. This could be a useful clue. I want you to tell me everything that you know right now. No way, Jose. I ain't spilling my guts to someone I have no connection with. Perhaps I should use that clue. You said I have no connection with you, Miss Hart. But don't you have a mutual point? But don't we have a mutual acquaintanceship with your apprentice? Oh, wait, well, that's. I reckon it would be mighty cruel of me to give Nicole's friends the cold shoulder. Then why don't you share with us what you know? Well, when you put it like that, no, no, no. I ain't falling for your nest tricks, no, sir. Reed. No, sir. No, no, just forget. It ain't nothing important. That's your passive. Right, give you information. Yeah, this can screw you over easily. This is actually one of the hardest ones in the game, just because it can be just real trial and error. You okay? Okay. Do you have a scooter? Such a slip of the tongue, it's sadly becoming a generous. You have a scoop, don't you? Now tell us what it is! Ah! Uh, Alright, you got me. I had got me the perfect scoop. But I ain't telling you what it is. I'm sorry, I'm gonna throw this story to a publisher. The information she's hiding could be vital to the investigation. I need to make a talk. Next, I will press her on the contents of her scoop. She may be quick to lose her tempo, but she's even quicker to lose her tongue. She's not a difficult opponent. Now, to extract the information I need. Does your information pertain to an incident of some kind? Well, it does and maybe it doesn't. That's hardly a clear answer. Well, well you always holler at me. I ain't done nothing wrong. I just knock in to do some investigative reporting. Oh, go. Ugh. Okay. You didn't do anything wrong. That's a bold statement. Considering you're currently trespassing on private property. Hey, you're doing too. Well, I guess the prosecutor's got a right to investigate wherever they please. I probably shouldn't mention anything about my current state of unemployment. Now, far worse people in the world, you know. I reckon I'm a saint compared to the folks who murder. Considering what you just mentioned, is it possible your scoop has something to do with a murder incident? Hey, I was only talking in general terms, you know. Just, I mean, anyone who looked like a road bag of roots compared to a murder, right? It sounds like you were just making excuses to me. All I did was got him the black one character a murder incident. I don't know anything about that. I ain't seen or heard nothing. I don't have enough clues. Does the scoop of yours have something to do with the black market auction? What are you talking about? I, I don't know nothing about that. Why aren't you just in the middle of infiltrating a black market auction? The only logical conclusion is that your story has something to do with it. Yet you ain't getting an answer for me. I didn't hear nothing. Haven't you realized it yet? I have you cornered. Oh great, I'm damned. This is what happens when you fail. I've got enough of your time with shades. You better get out of there. Yeah, you only take a tiny hit. Shoot, I messed up! I can't go now. I have to set my ground. Yeah. Anyways. We got through this. Thankfully, you get checkpoints. You didn't hear? What exactly? Did you hear something during the auction? Um, no. That's it. That's, it was just a weird sad all. I even mean, just wasn't that in my article. Just, just forget about it. That's no question. Something happened during the black market auction. There is a shot. That could be a clue. Okay, come on. 
Press passing. Okay. Good. Come on. Let's see this. Didn't you say you had something stranger in the auction? If that stuck out with you so much, it must not have been a sound that you'd normally hear. For example, the screams of a murder victim. Eck! How did you keep figuring everything out so quickly? Th that's right. That's I stumbled upon a murder in the middle of my sticker. But please, don't make me say anymore. This is the biggest square in a while. The matter that you overheard. It's most likely the same incident that we are currently investigating. This is bound to be crucial information. I'll finish this by confront confirming the cred credibility of her information. She has nowhere to run! It's time to deal the final blow! Tell me what you know about the murder incident. Full detail. Well, my memory ain't what it used to be. Not much I can talk about. I ain't the most attentive girl in the world, see? I don't have enough clues. Tell me the truth. I know you're still hiding something from me. I hide from nobody! I already told y'all everything I know. I don't have enough clues. You were some more murder? You call me a liar? Then fighting words. I'm a vote by journalist. I would never publish lies in my article. That's a more accurate than anyone. That's my motto. My motto, huh? This could be a useful clue. Hey, it's Ruth. I know you're lying from me. I have no one. I already told you everything I know. Alright. No, yes. Yes, accuracy. Oh, right, right. I don't expect a bona fide journalist to be so inattentive. Didn't you just say your motto is to be faster and more accurate than anyone? Oh, uh, well, that's... As I expected, the credibility of your invasion suspect. Uh, but I, I know what I heard. I even got proof. You have proof? How is this possible? Explain yourself at once. You, I got me some evident white. You heard that? Well, well, I was just talking to myself. Y'all just go on and pay no mind. See, so she's still trying to hide something. This is a more clue. Hey, the truth. I know you're still hiding from... Yes. Isn't there something you haven't told me yet? You have evidence regarding the incident you witnessed. Something that... That's something definitive enough to publish in an article. Ah! What well, well, in tarnation? Let me hook off the hook already. Fine! I'll tell you everything. I'll even show y'all the photo I took if you stop harassing me. That's good enough for you? Checkmate. Yeah, Logic Chuck is very merciful. I lost. I really lost. The mouth of the South has been defeated. Now then, it's time to come clean. Tell me everything you know. I was watching the auction, gathering info from my story. You didn't just watch, though. You got shocking photos, too, right? We'll answer that question next episode. Anyways, I really appreciate you sticking around to watch this episode. You're a great viewer. If you come back for the next one, if you like, subscribe, comment, share, do as they want. And with that, I'll see you later. Bye.